Hi, today we are going to look at internet service technologies and really what this is about is how web pages work. So there are three main categories in which um, these services technologies will be required. The one is how is the data stored or data storage. The one is about running the instructions and the third one is how the output that finally appears on your screen is formatted. So remember that when we talk about the internet, things are happening in two places, either at the web server, which is a big computer which stores web pages and then serves them to you. You send a request for a certain URL page and the web server sends the data back in a certain format so that you get a beautiful web page displayed on your web browser. And this, the web browser, the the, your computer is called the client side and this the web server side is called the server side. So the data storage, um, remember that web pages are customized for you. That means they're made specially just for you, how you want them, how you need them to be shown to you. And for this to happen, the data storage either must happen locally, that means on your computer, or else at the web server. There are here some examples. So you know that Google stores your settings, how you want to have the data displayed and certain settings are stored. So if you log into your Google account and you set your language preference to French, then whenever you search, Google will display your searches in French. So it has personalized everything for you and the data on your device the data is stored on your device to log you in automatically too. And here's an example of a web search done in French. So Pinterest also stores data about your pin boards online. And when you search on Pinterest, it serves up data especially for you. E-commerce websites also remember their clients' parts, pur purchases and browsing history, and they can recommend products. For example, your take lot. If you log into Take A Lot, it will recognize you because the website has a cookie that is stored on your computer. And what is a cookie? It's just a little tiny text file that is stored on your hard drive and your settings for a certain website are saved there. So if you consult a website and then you close it later and then you visit the website again a few days later, your cookie site, your cookie file will be found and the data in the file will make sure that you go back to a customized version of the website. If you turn off the cookies in your browser settings, then you will prevent websites from storing your data locally. And the maximum size for a cookie file is four kilobytes, which is very small. And cookies, cookies are stored on the user's computer. So web pages are dynamically created as the user views them. Now, there are certain times when it's best for the server, which has data stored, to first create the web page using the data stored at the server, because the server has very fast access to its own data. It can put the web page together and then send that to the user. And when the web page or online application is a front end to a large database centric system, this makes sense. Let's look at some examples. So a cell phone provider like Cell C, it creates a, it has a front end app that you look at your data on your Cell C account. This is run in the browser and it, it manages the accounts of all your other contract customers and it links to a central database. So when you look for your balances, the server has all those balances and its storage, it can look it up create the web page and send that data through to you for display on your browser or in the app. Or if you think of the medical the discovery medical aid and you can look at your vitality rewards and they are, they are personalized for you because it's what you've earned on your rewards and um, that is also done on the server side. So to keep the web interactive, websites also need to include some programming instructions. Sometimes they are done on the server side 
and sometimes they are done on the client side. Remember, that's your computer. So there is a language called JavaScript. It's a language designed specif spe specifically for ex execution inside web browsers. Remember, JavaScript has nothing to do with Java. The instructions are downloaded from the server as text commands, and then those instructions are executed on your local computer. So a JavaScript program is execute, executed after the web page has been downloaded onto the local computer. They are executed inside the web browser, for example, inside Chrome or inside Edge. And where are they used? For interactive slideshows or buttons or pictures that respond when you move your cursor over them. And tabbed areas with tabs that you can click on to see different content in the same space, drop down menus, error messages that pop up when you don't complete an online form properly, lots of other examples too. So these features are all made possible by JavaScript commands that are inside the web page, but they are executed as you do different things in your um, web page. So there are server-side instructions for scripting and programming, and we can compare this with, for example, if you buy ready-made furniture, it's completely made at the factory and you buy it. Whereas, you know, IKEA, I don't know if any of you have bought kits for making furniture, and then you have to assemble it at home. It's got an instruction sheet. That's an example of the script. So the home assembly type furniture is an example of the client side script. Less work is done at the factory or in this example, the server. And the network traffic, there's little trouble because the parts are cleverly modular and different products can be built from the same bits and bobs. Whereas with factory assembly, that's the server side script. The factory needs to assemble a lot of parts and make any customizations for the client at the factory. So there's extra work at the factory and it requires more transportation and logistics. So I don't know if you like that comparison, it might help you. So if you and a friend both log on to Yahoo and create an account, and then you each customize your own homepage, and you choose to stay automatic, to be automatically logged in. From then on, whenever you go to that site, your page will be different from your friends. How does that happen? It's done with server-side instructions because you've each got a personalized account and that is done at the server before the web page comes to the browser. And it usually links to a database at the server and that is where the source of the customized content comes from. We also get SQL. Some of you may have learned some SQL. So a set of SQL statements with an assigned name that's stored in the database is compiled in compiled form so that it can be shared by a number of programs. And this is done on the server side. It's called an SQL server stored procedure. There's also a thing called Ajax. And now when we talk about client-side scripting, server-side scripting, and SQL, these are tools that dynam dynamically create interactive web pages, but they only generate a page, one whole page at a time. And all the data must be downloaded in one go to the browser. And if you only need one little byte changed on that web page, on that web page the browser has to refresh the entire web page. You've got to re-download all the data. The server has to create the new page and you have to download all the data. Now for map, maps, it does not work so well because as you scroll across the map or you shrink it or you grow it, it doesn't make such good sense to have to re-download the whole map again because there's a lot of data on a map. On a map. So that's where we start using Ajax. Ajax can update a web page without reloading the whole page. It requests data from the server after the page has loaded, and it receives data from the server after the page has loaded, and it can send data to the server in the background. Now, Google Maps uses Ajax, and you can pan around the map, you can zoom in and out, and you can even search for a location 
and you don't get any flickering when you refresh the page. And AJAX stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. It allows the browser to download data while without requiring the whole page to refresh. Cascading style sheets is um, CSS. You may have heard about it and it allows you to define um, and name styles. So, if, if it, for example, in a whole web um, site, you use a certain style on all your different pages, you can create CSS file and that will be applied to all the different pages. And you save it in a .css file. Location-based services um, that provides information for entertainment or security, and it's based on your real-time geo data from your device. Now that's if you switch on your geo location. Now some services allow con consumers to check in at restaurants or coffee shops, stores, concerts, and other places or events, and it uses this. So some businesses offer a reward for people who check in, like prizes or coupons or discounts. A lot of examples of um, Websites that uses, use this is Google Maps, Foursquare, GetGlue, Yelp, and Facebook Places. Now, mobile play websites, you know that for a mobile, the screen is much smaller, so you need the website to be shrunk. You see the example here, the tiny prints at the top is the bigger website for a normal computer screen. And on the right is the small website made specially for a smartphone small screen, and that's called a mobile website. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. It sounds a little bit like HTML, but it's different. It's a set of rules. Remember that a protocol just means a set of rules. And it's used right across the World Wide Web. It tells us how the messages that go across the Internet must be formatted and transmitted, and what actions the web browsers and the web servers and browsers should take in response to various commands. When you type in a URL in your browser, it actually sends an HTTP command to the web server, and that tells it to fetch and then send back the web page that you have asked for, and it's all done in HTTP. Now, HTTPS, it's the same as HTTP, but it's got an extra layer on. It's made secure. And it's done with encryption, like secret codes that they put on all the messages going across the internet so that the data cannot just be interrupted by somebody and read. It is secure. They, we use something called SSL, which you will learn about in another lesson. File Transfer Protocol, or FTP, is another protocol, and that's made for the way that files get transmitted across the Internet. Rich Internet Applications, these are, that's a web application that runs in your browser. It's designed to deliver the same features and functions normally associated with a desktop application. RIA splits the processing across the Internet and the network. And the user interface and related activity and capability is done on the client side. And the data manipulation and operation on the application server side. And some examples are Google Docs or Microsoft Office. A few more um, terms. PHP um, is an acronym for PHP Hypertext Preprocessor. It's a widely used open source scripting language. The scripts are executed on the server and it's free to download and use. And XML stands for extensible markup language. It's used to store and transport, to transport data and it's designed so that both humans and machines can read it easily. You need to also know about an intranet and an extranet. An intranet is just a network. Um, where employees can create content or communicate or collaborate, collaborate, get stuff done and develop the com company culture. It's internal to a uh, company. Whereas an extranet is the same as an intranet, but it also provides controlled access 
to certain authorized customers or vendors or partners, people outside the company, but only if they've been authorized. So they would require a password to do this. And thank you for listening today. I hope and trust that everything will go well with the exams. God bless.